Since I last spoke to you, I had hoped that by now this would be completely finished. As you can maybe see, she's not. I've still got some work to do. There's no medals on here. Um, and she hasn't got her um, Holloway badge there. But she's making progress. Having said that, the progress has been long and hard. Because I changed the shoulder, suddenly she was actually then looking as though she was falling over. I had to make this hip much bigger. The, the bottom is bigger, which I'll show you later. The leg then goes down there like that different. So it's not like when I was an artist, I painted pictures. If you change something on, on a painting, it's changed, no worries. If you change something on a sculpture, you add more on a shoulder. The shoulder's got to go somewhere. The body's got to be joined up and it's got to make sense. So it's got to make sense from here. It's got to make sense from over here, from there, from all angles, even aerial views and down the bottom. So it's been long and hard. She's got more fabric on her, on her um, arms. She's got a lot more fabric here. Her jacket is wider. I hope it's making more sense. Having said that, I always, with my work, go through a really lacking in confidence phase where you know all the clay came out of the orange clay bins. Well, the phase I go through when something is almost finished, but there's something niggling me that I'm not happy with, I have to stop myself getting my big um, bashy stick here and scraping off to here and scraping off the clay and putting it back in the clay bin because until a piece is finished, until it has been okayed, until it is signed, all it is, is clay. Beside uh, Emily on the bench will be her three favorite books and her mortarboard. Um, as I explained, she always wore her mortarboard when she marched with the suffragettes. So that's very important. Um, she wouldn't necessarily carry it everywhere with her, but to tell the story of her, it's very necessary that it sits on the bench beside her. The three books that was her Holy Bible, which she took everywhere with her. Then there was the Chaucer's, um, Chaucer for Children, because there was a character in there that really made an impression on Emily, My Fair Emily, which was spelt totally differently with a Y, sort of like ye olde, that sort of thing. Um, wonderful. And she also had bright red hair. And then Walt Whitman Poetry, really made a big impression on Emily, so that is also um, very important. So those three are the three very important books for Emily. Um, and then we've got the mortarboard sitting on top. Um, I could tell you a bit about casting and making a mould and the fact that I've had to sort of fill in quite a lot here for when I put the rubber on, but I won't. Um, on the back of the mortarboard, it's a bit boring like that. So what I've done is I've made a tassel um, I'm not going to cheat, but with the ta tassel, I'm going to attach it just to find out what, how it looks best, like that, or like that, probably like that, and then I'm going to make it in clay. So it'll probably be something like that in clay, which is probably going to take me a day and a half to do. I hope not. Now I thought I'd show you the back, because you haven't seen that before. Um, so I've turned the whole thing around. Um, you can probably see her hat in more detail. The fact that I've added some texture so that it looks like a straw hat. And you can see her, her hair from the back. Now, I was talking earlier about painting a picture. When you paint it, you don't have to alter it. And it, the importance of doing a sculpture is you have to keep looking at it from all angles, all the way around. And the very fact that um, I've moved the sculpture to this position, which is the opposite from how she was sitting before, is I've actually noticed um, that her hair is slightly flatter this side than it is the other. So I need to add some more hair here. I'm going to add it there. Uh, yes, that looks much, much better. So um, adding a bit more here. So I put it on in sausage shapes. Um, following the line of the hair that's already on, um, push it in. 
quite a lot softer than the clay that's already on. Got to remember that it's going underneath the rim of this hat, so it's got to follow that line and squash in like that. I think probably, I was just going to ask you whether you thought, but I'm going to add a bit more on there as well, um, over her ear. Um, she's got very nice ears, but they were sticky out ears. So perhaps she wanted to disguise them um, by having her hair like this, a bit bouffant and in like that. So there we go. We're following the lines that we've already got. And then we'll put some lines on it like that. It is a bit soft, so it's got a bit of tidying up to do later when it's dried out a bit. Talking of drying out, the clay dries out very, very easily and then it starts cracking. That's something I don't want to happen. So I keep this, I'm not trying to sell Sainsbury's things. Um, I have to keep spraying to keep the clay not too wet, otherwise it's like working with a quagmire, but wet enough to absorb through into the layers, otherwise I get crack marks. I don't really want that to happen. Right, and especially the hands. We've had fingers crack off. That makes me a bit cross. Now, I thought I like to keep texture in my work, so you can probably see the back. You can see the, the texture of where I've put the clay on. I'm following the lines of the body and the lines of the, of the costume, um, her, her jacket, but if I wanted it to be smooth, I'd probably put her in a smooth jacket and just mould that. This is clay, this is artist work, these are my marks and they are going to stay. However, I quite like what I've done with the hat. So every now and again here, when there's something slightly smooth, I'm going to use this piece of fabric. I'm going to put it on there like that. I'm just going to rub it like that. And you just got a little bit more interest in the smooth bits and it makes it have a feeling of being a fabric. Not too much, just every now and then perhaps children might like to sort of find where they're hiding. I've also got to bear in mind not to put any of those marks where I'm going to have seams because we're not going to be able to match the marks up when we cast it. So it'll be in the, the larger areas that are not going to have any... This, by seams I mean seams in, in the mould, not seams in the fabric. Um, I think that's... Oh yes, my alteration, adding the bottom. Quite a large piece of bottom was added on the back here and this is the piece of bottom she's sitting on. Therefore we've got more weight in that side than the other so I had to take weight off that hip because she's now leaning. She wasn't leaning before but now I hope I've captured the lean, the leaning look, the fact that she's on this cheek, this thigh and the weight is going through to the front of the skirt. Um, and I've been able to have fun doing quite an interesting bottom. The jacket is also at an angle because she's like that. When I do get the okay and this is all agreed as finished, my signature will be there on the jacket, always is on, on, on the back of jackets of sculptures that I do. So fingers crossed, next week I'll have finished the medals and we'll have the okay and this will be ready for me to make the mould. <laughs>